Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Olivia Flavius from Bia Tech Home and in today's video I am so excited to showcase my top 20 DIY Dollar Tree summer garden indoor outdoor decor crafts. So I love to show you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. Listen, I truly believe you do not have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. Also, don't forget to enter my $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. All you guys have to do is subscribe and comment down below and subscribing is totally free. Now, I know you guys are here for the crafting, so without further ado, let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your quarter and paint, and let's get to crafting. Awesome Dollar Tree Tipsy Pot. So you're going to grab four Dollar Tree garden planters, and I chose the larger one because I want to make a really large Tipsy Pot, and I used an attachment on my screwdriver to drill the holes with. You could also use a hot glue gun, the end of that, and just heat it up. So the next thing you want to do is take a broom hand or any kind of long um, PVC pipe that you can add to the center of it. And this is just a Dollar Tree little broom handle and I'm adding a bag of the Dollar Tree potting soil to the base of this. The next thing I had an idea to do was to add um, numbers to the outside of this. Now you guys can use your house numbers and this is not my actual house number, but um, I thought it would be a fun idea to share with you guys this part of it if you wanted to do this. Now I'm using the Dollar Tree poster board um, stickers and I'm just gonna stick those on and then spray paint over those. I'm using the Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint and that is really a great spray paint. I've also heard that you can spray a layer of spray Mod Podge on first, then add your spray paint. So I have yet to try that, but I may try that because I did notice that it scratched off fairly easily, but you can also seal it with some Mod Podge or acrylic sealer. Now, I wasn't in love with how these letters looked, so I just ended up adding the poster board letters back on and then added a layer of waterproof Mod Podge on top of that. Now for my tipsy pot part. So I just, I changed to the white Dollar Tree broom handle and I just shoved that down inside of my pot and then you take your first pot, you tip it all the way to the side, then you take your second pot and you tip that to the other side. And I did add some rocks on top of my dirt because I don't want my tipsy pot blowing away. So here's how it looks so far. Now I didn't have foam to put inside of here and I wanted to add some fake flowers because I haven't really bought a whole lot of real flowers yet. We still have um, a little bit of frost that could happen. So I'm just holding off on doing any real plants yet. But I did add some of these Dollar Tree fake plants. They have some really nice fake greenery out this year and it's plastic, so it'll definitely be weatherproof. And so I just added some little pool noodle down in there and then I'm just um, placing my little greenery in there, just kind of scattering it about, making it look kind of wild and whimsical. And then I'm using some of the Dollar Tree Celsius grass and moss mixed together and just adding that to the top. And you can see I bent my broom handle over. It was a little bit too long. I thought I was going to, you know, cascade some ivy down on it, but I wasn't crazy about that. They're really flimsy, so they're pretty easy to bend in half. So here is how it's looking. Let me know what you guys think. This is the first time I have ever made a tips pot and I felt like it came out pretty good. I did have a little wobble with the back of one of them. I set it on the side of my little patio here and it flopped off and so it got a crack in it. So just be careful. These are not the most sturdy pots. You can definitely go to Walmart, you know, and get like a clay pot if you wanted to, but I thought for doing this on the cheap, it came out pretty fabulous. Um, I really encourage you guys to try one of these. It was so much easier than I thought it was gonna be. I really thought it was gonna be way harder. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are loving this one. First Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna take some of these Dollar Tree metal flowers, and the first thing I wanna do is just very gently bend them apart. I wanna go ahead and spray paint them white with my Rust-Oleum Matte White spray paint, and I wanna get between all of the petals. The other thing I wanna do is cover them with a plastic bag so I don't get any white spray paint on the petals. My idea for these is to create a really beautiful beautiful Mackenzie Child inspired floral um, metal flower. So I want to start out with this base of white spray paint. I ended up only needing one coat, but I did spray the front and the back really well. Thank you. 
The next step is I'm going to take some of this parchment paper or wax paper and I want to trace out one of the petals and this is a great little tip. So you just take your parchment paper and you lay it on top of whatever you're going to be decoupaging on top of and just trace it out. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut a petal. So this project I have had in my head to do and it was so fun to bring it to life. So I'm taking these beautiful floral Mackenzie Childs napkins. You can find them on the Mackenzie Childs website. I'm so in love with their beautiful work, but the prices are a little bit much for me. So I'm just taking my template with the wax paper and I'm tracing out all of the petals that I'm going to need for this project. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut the petals out. Now I don't pull apart the white backing of the napkin until I'm done um, cutting them and tracing them out. I hope that makes sense. So there's several layers of a napkin and for these you'll want to go ahead and pull apart until you get to the smallest layer. I'm also using some of this dishwasher safe Mod Podge but really any Mod Podge will do if you're going to leave these inside of your home. They are metal flowers and they were out in my garden so I had originally wanted to put them back out of my garden but after all of the work that it took to do this I may end up leaving them inside. So I'm adding a layer of Mod Podge and then I'm adding my petal on and be careful because it's kind of a little bit difficult with as tedious as this is but it is so well worth it in the end. And once you have your little petal all the way positioned, you can just take a nice layer of Mod Podge and run that over that. And then you can see I'm kind of tipping the end of the floral petal. And so here we go. It is basically just gluing these pretty pieces of napkin on here. And there was really no rhyme or reason. I tried to kind of space the hot pink, the darker color out every other petal with some of the lighter colors but I wanted this to be really whimsical and really fun and creative and just look like this patchwork bloom of design which I've been studying the Mackenzie Childs um, designs and they're so whimsical and beautiful and check out how this came out oh my goodness I am over the moon in heaven with this project so it did take about an hour to Dollar Tree DIY I want to share with you all how to make an amazing Dollar Tree solo lamp. So you're going to take two of the Dollar Tree candlesticks and use a little bit of E6000 glue all the way around the rim. And then I just used a tiny dab of hot glue. And then I'm going to use one of these little Dollar Tree fancy glasses. I'm imagining they're probably maybe wine glasses, but these are plastic. And you're going to add some E6000 glue to the base of that. The next thing you want to do is grab some of those Dollar Tree garden planters. And I'm using this utility box cutting knife to poke a hole. Be careful, you may want to wear gloves. And then I'm going to pop my little solar stake into the top part of that. And that's going to be my lampshade. And check this out, you guys. We have a fabulous little lamp that's a solar lamp on a budget. I'm going to be using these out on my patio. And I'm just going to paint the top of this. Now, I also wanted to share with you guys, if you cannot find that uh, particular bucket, maybe you can find the flower and garden bucket. And all you have to do is pop the little... Um, um, side handles off of that. I didn't like it quite as well as the other one, but just to give you guys another idea, I know we can find random things sometimes at our Dollar Tree and sometimes we can't. Okay, the next thing that you want to do is make another one. I made two of these and I decided to make one black and one white just to give a little bit of contrast. And then I decided to go in also with my spray paint and this is just Rust-Oleum black satin spray paint. And I gave the entire thing a good dose of spray paint and I actually used two coats. I just wanted it to look really cohesive as this was really a real lamp. I do love the Rust-Oleum brand spray paint. I get it for $3.96 at Walmart and it is well, well, well worth it in my opinion. It holds up well, it adheres to plastic and all of that good stuff. And this is not sponsored in any way, just my absolute favorite spray paint. Okay, so here is how they look. These are absolutely one of my favorite DIY projects I have done in a while. And I think they are fabulous for summer. They're easy to move around. And we did this on a total budget. Now, if you guys have a little patio, 
patio or a covered porch, or you could even pop these into a window and have them by your kitchen window at night if it gets sun. They do, they do need to get sun on that top solar part in order to get the most bang for your buck and the most pretty lighting. And a friend of mine uses these all the time and said that they stay uh, bright on their patio until about 2 a.m. I'm not up that late, so I wasn't for sure, but I thought that would be a little helpful knowledge for you all in case you are hosting a party or maybe some type of bridal event or whatnot. And here's just some different ways that I thought you guys might want to style these. So have fun with it, get creative, and you don't have to use Dollar Tree candlesticks. You guys could always pop into your thrift store or really pick up some little candlesticks pretty much anywhere. So, and also think about this. You could use an old lamp base, like a real lamp base to do this. I shared that with you guys last year or a couple years ago, how to use just a real lamp base. So go check out some more DIYs on my channel. I wanna share with you all how to make an amazing, beautiful solar powered chandelier. So we're gonna take a Dollar Tree wire wreath form and then a Dollar Tree splatter screen and remove the handle. You may want to wear gloves to do that. You're gonna poke holes in four places around the splatter screen and then take some zip ties and run those through the second rung of the inside of your wire wreath form. The next thing I'm gonna do is take some of these garden gate chandeliers and zip tie it to the wreath form. Now I did turn my wreath form upside down. That made it a lot easier for me to do and it also concealed my zip ties. And you're going to zip tie the garden gate to the outside rung of the wire wreath form. I hope that makes sense. You guys can kind of see the visual of what I'm doing. Now I attached the second garden gate and then I'm just gonna use a couple more zip ties and zip tie that to the wire wreath form. It didn't fit perfectly, but that little end piece I just kind of overlapped. And I did on this second piece, remove those little slats at the very end of the garden gate. So have fun with it, get creative. Again, I do recommend using gloves when you're working with the splatter screen in the beginning. I did find that out the hard way and kind of nicked my hand on the top there. But you guys, this is gonna turn out so amazing. It's probably one of my most favorite DIYs I have ever done. And I did get this idea from one of our Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook group members. I saw somebody post something similar. It was a garden chandelier and they use these little gates. Now I don't know that it was the same, but it piqued my interest and just got my wheels turning. So I thought I would try to create something on my own here. And it was actually really sturdy as you guys can tell. So I flipped it over and now it's time to add the little solar chandelier part or the little solar part so I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree um, little solar things and I'm going to uh, re remove the bottom part of it and then I'm going to take my little um, box cutter and I'm going to add just a giant hole so you want to make the hole large enough to fit down or for the solar piece to fit down into the chandelier now, again, be careful with this part. This needs to be done by an adult only. Um, and those little um, prongs down there do get kind of um, sharp. So just be really careful on this part, okay? <laughs> I just wanted to leave you guys a little forewarning there. Okay, so now that I have that all finished, I did pull the little solar pieces back out and then I decided to make it a little bit more glam and fabulous. You guys know me, I love to go extra and over the top. So I'm taking this beautiful, rose gold kind of bronze spray paint and I gave it two coats of spray paint. The next thing I wanted to do was take one of these Dollar Tree garden chains and add that so I can hang my garden chandelier and I'm super excited. We have been working on our patio and I can't wait to reveal it to you guys that this is going to go out on my patio. In fact, I actually might make two. Now I'm taking some of these little Dollar Tree greenery leaf garlands and I used four and I just kind of layered them on top of each other and then just using some Dollar Tree wire, I took the wire and attached it to the wreath form part. Little side note here, I will tell you guys to add your chain last. I kind of learned that the hard way as well. But again, I was just kind of going with the flow and creating this and, you know, trial and error. So you guys get to see the finished product. You don't always see some of the things that I mess up on. Okay, so here is how it turned out. What do you guys think? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I do have this just kind of hanging in my studio right now. But here is how it looked kind of hanging outside on my front part and on a little tree. We are still doing construction on our patio, but 
I will update you guys and share you, with you guys what it looks like on the patio, but I am so crushing on this. I hope you guys are inspired. I am so like excited this. for this DIY. We're gonna create a side table using Dollar Tree garden planters. So you're going to need four garden planters and you're gonna flip one upside down and then glue the other one to the one that you flipped upside down. And I'm using a mixture of E6000 glue for permanent hold and hot glue for temporary hold. Now I have three of the sections together and I decided to add in some stones to this next section. Again, using E6000 glue and hot glue, just gluing these together. So this is so easy, you guys. And actually, I meant to say you're going to need five of these square garden planters. And you can really do this with any size. I've shared with you a round one before and now I had to share with you this idea for a square one. And here is how it is turning out. You pop a little tray onto it. Dollar Tree is carrying these little um, clear plastic trays and they fit perfectly on top of these garden planters. I have never done this one before and I've never seen it done before. So I hope you guys have fun with it. It worked perfectly giving it some weight and then I just added some white spray paint and now I'm going to make it look a little bit farmhouse chic, kind of like a faux enamel by taking this black paint and one of these little Dollar Tree sponge brushes and you just gently run the sponge brush in and along the sides of the spots of the planter that are kind of popped out. And so you guys can really get creative with it. You could go totally glam with this tray. In fact, I almost spray painted it gold, but I'm doing a little bit more of a relaxed look in my home for summer. As far as the patio area is concerned, I also might put this in the corner of my dining room. And I also recommend that you seal it with an acrylic spray sealer. I just got the spray paint done and then tomorrow I'm going to seal it. That way the spray paint has time to kind of dry. But here is how it turned out, you guys. This is a fun and fabulous little planter um, table and we did it on a total budget. So very small cost, a little bit of bang for your buck. And I think it turned out absolutely fun and amazing. And I hope you guys go for it and try one of these little garden planter side tables. I'm using the rope one that I made using storage containers out on my patio and it actually works really, really well. For the rope one, I did add Scotch Guard, And for this one, I am gonna use an acrylic sealer. But comment and let me know what you guys think about it. I'm crushing on it, especially for a little bit of summertime fun on a budget. DIY. I want to share with you how to make an outdoor solar lamp using one of these Dollar Tree colanders. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to begin to snip off this larger outer edge. And you will need some fairly sharp scissors. It seemed to work best for me to go ahead and clip through the larger lip of it. I started out just trying to kind of clip the little smaller um, pieces off and then using um, these larger scissors, I just clipped off this first lip and then I'm going around and clipping off the second lip. So basically you just want your colander without that big edge. I also did trim off the little extra tabs at the top with my scissors. And then using these smaller scissors, I'm just taking and I'm going to create like a little hole in the center. And that's where my solar lamp um, part is going to come into play. So just grab one of those little solar stakes from Dollar Tree and they actually um, remove from the stake part and you can use that top part and pop it down into your solar lamp. So the next thing I decided to do to make it look a little bit more high end and less like a colander, I just used this black Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint and gave it a nice good coat of spray paint. And you can also lay down a spray adhesive Mod Podge and then add your spray paint. That helps your spray paint last even longer if you're gonna be using this outside. Then I went ahead and popped that solar lamp um, down inside of my little solar lamp. And then I just used some of these Dollar Tree 
chains and this is just comes in one pack and you can take the chains and gently kind of poke them into the top part of the colander and then you want to try to space them out as evenly as possible into these three sections and then you have a fabulous little lamp on a total budget now I'm going to go back in and even trim up those little edge pieces and you may want to grab an extra colander. I thought about that. Mine turned out fine, but it might be um, just worthwhile in case, you know, some of those plastic clips kind of clip off too easily or whatnot. But here it is, there it was kind of in the nighttime, what it would look like. And here it is kind of what it would look like in the daytime. And I think it's so fabulous, you guys. It's such a fun and easy way, great for patios or even that little space um, that you just need a fun little light so fun fabulous on a budget For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to take one of those Dollar Tree planters and jazz them up with some contact paper. So Dollar Tree has been putting out all different kinds of contact paper, and this is actually kind of one that they've had forever, but I'm just measuring it to go around the base of my planter, and then I'm going to just trim it off. And I also wanted to kind of give this little creation a bit of a French farmhouse flair, so I thought this black and white would be really cute. And then if I change my mind and want to go just back to the black, all I have to do is peel off the contact paper. So I I do love that option as well. Now, originally I was hoping that I could just wrap the contact paper around the planter, but that really didn't work. I ended up having to cut different sections um, of the contact paper and then apply it. And I will tell you that the Dollar Tree contact paper is actually pretty easy to work with. So give yourself some grace with it. Like if it bubbles up, you can just kind of pull it off and then reapply it. And also think about this, it's only $1. So if you mess up a strip of it and you have to, you know, throw it away, it's not the end of the world. Although it's very forgiving to be honest with you. Now, if you want even more options on contact paper, I will tell you that Walmart has contact paper and it's super adorable. And a lot of times you can find the Pioneer Woman um, contact paper. So there's a lot of really bright colors. But I think that this black and white roses is probably one of my favorites from Dollar Tree as far as giving like a French farmhouse look. So again, I just did have to go ahead and trim off some sections and reapply it. And I feel like that's kind of how you have to do in life. Sometimes you just have to keep trying things, trimming things off to make them work. But more than anything, just putting one foot in front of the other and not giving up is probably one of the most important things. And I know that's a little bit deep for contact paper, but recently I've been going through some stuff and I'm just really trying to remind myself to give myself some grace and keep putting one foot in front of the other. So if you guys are listening to this right now and you need to hear that message, that's what I'm going to tell you. Give yourself grace, keep putting one foot in front of the other. And even if you have to do some cutting and pasting to make things work in the end, you're going to get there and it's going to be okay. So keep going. Don't give up. Okay. So again, a little bit deep for contact paper and planters, but a fun idea as well. So I found this cute little um, burlap ribbon. They're carrying this at Dollar Tree as well. And I decided to trim out the base and also the top. And that's going to make it just look a little bit nicer. My lines on my cutting on my contact paper wasn't super clean. And again, I did want to give it a bit of a French farmhouse flair. Now to top everything off, I'm going to add in some styrofoam and these cute little greenery pieces. And then that's going to be pretty much it. I've really been loving the Dollar Tree greenery pieces. I feel like they're really nice this year and there's a lot of options to choose from. So here it is popped into my little setting. So fun and fabulous on a total budget. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to make a super adorable little side table using four Dollar Tree baseball bats from the kids section and then one of these little storage containers. So you're going to zip tie the baseball bats to the inside of the storage container. And I flipped mine up to where the little legs of the baseball or the arm of the baseball Anyway, the smaller part of the baseball was facing down. And so the places I was able to zip tie them the best to that I felt like it made the sturdiest were the top part of the inside of the basket and then the bottom part of the inside of the basket. And you could even add one more zip tie if you wanted, but it was pretty sturdy for being like a little plastic baseball table. And you'll never believe how cute and adorable this turns out at the end. I am absolutely crushing on it. It's gonna be so cute for my studio. 
So again, I'm just continuing to zip tie the little baseballs to the inside of the storage basket. Now, little note here, this is just kind of for a decoration. You're not gonna wanna put this out on your porch in the high wind, but if you had like a little corner, which I actually do and I might try it, you could put a cute little plant on it or you know a little side table for really any little space. But again, it's just mostly decorative. It's not going to hold a ton of weight or be like the most sturdy little table in the world. Okay, so here is how it looks kind of in phase one. And I did try it out and kind of push around on it just to make sure that those little baseball bats were gonna stay stable. And they actually totally did. Okay, so now I'm taking one of these extra large Dollar Tree canvases. They have these brand new out in the stores. I'm not sure, sure if I showed it with you guys in my last haul, but you guys are definitely gonna have to check for them. And then I used some E6000 glue to attach it, but I needed to have the project done quicker. So I ended up removing it and then using hot glue. Now I'm just spray painting it with my Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint and I will tell you I probably needed to use one more coat. The next thing I wanted to do was just kind of cover up the fact that it looked like a plastic storage basket so I dug into my craft stash I had actually three different types of nautical rope from the Dollar Tree so I'm really kind of just making like an ombre layer or really more of just a hodgepodge of rope. And so I'm just hot gluing the nautical rope on the lip of the outside of the storage basket. And I'm continuing to go around the table until I run out of this style of nautical rope. I believe I had two of the cream colored nautical ropes and then some more of the brown. And I also think that I may have not got my table completely straight on there, I maybe should have measured it, but it's a cute little table regardless. Have fun with it, get creative and go for it. I think it's a fun little decorative side table and comment and let me know if there's any ideas that you might have for giving it a little bit more weight. I will tell you that whenever you use rope on your side tables, like I did that other rope side table, the rope actually gives it a ton of weight. So here is how it turned out. It's an adorable little side table. I just thought it was so fun and creative. It would be a great little project project if you guys had a couple um, little of these goodies like you can find the majority of this at most Dollar Trees. You could also use a Dollar Tree sign in place of the canvas. So fun and fabulous on a total budget. trash to treasure thrift store dollar tree makeover project i am going to make over this lamp it's an indoor lamp but i want to make it into an outdoor garden lamp so i'm just taking off the top part and i'm clipping off the wiring now somebody had already clipped off the wiring so it wasn't usable and then i'm going to take one of those dollar tree solar stakes and i'm going to turn this into a lamp i saw this and i really wanted to try it i was so excited to go for for it. You guys, this is such a fun way to make over a lamp. So I'm just taking some outdoor white paint and I ended up using two coats of this outdoor paint to paint my lamp base. So once I had my lamp base all dry, I went in with some E6000 glue and I took my lampshade and I just added E6000 glue to the harp or the little interior part of the lamp base and that's going to sit directly on top of my lamp base. The lampshade is gonna sit directly on top of the lamp base and so they're gonna be glued together. And then the next thing I wanted to do was take that Dollar Tree solar stake and you remove the bottom stake part and then you wanna E6000 glue the bottom part of the solar stake inside into the lamp. Now this is going to be a bit permanent, but I'm thinking at the end of the summer, I'll probably just be able to twist the solar stick off if it doesn't work anymore and just put a new one in there. So I was really, really, really excited for this project. Number one, because I had these lamp bases laying around and here is a little bit of a close up view. And also I did take it inside to let it dry because it was about 90 degrees on this day. And so here it is with the glow after the solar stake has charged up. You guys, I am totally in love with this. I think this came out so fantastic. I think this would be an amazing project if you have a deck, a porch, um, 
anywhere that you want to add that really extra special little glow to. I think it's so romantic and so cute and you could really get creative with this. You can pick up lamps super cheap at thrift stores and I also am going to treat my um, lamp shade with some type of coating to make sure that it repels water. But I was so excited to share this project with you guys. I really hope you try this one. So here it is also outside, and I think it's so cute. I hope you guys are loving this as well. And so for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I wanna create a temporary sofa slipcover for outside on my little cushion. So I'm taking a Dollar Tree shower curtain and also some of these Dollar Tree sheet grippers. Now the Walmart sheet grippers are a lot easier to use if you have problems with your hands, but the Dollar Tree sheet grippers were only a dollar and this is a very temporary little cover out here. I will tell you that the Dollar Tree shower curtains are incredibly flimsy. I want this to last for about a month because we're having so many storms and they're just drenching my outdoor cushions and also my cat Tinky is shedding her winter fur and so she's getting fur everywhere. So anyway what I wanted to do was go to the bottom of the shower curtain and find the little ring that's already in there and that's where I attached my first sheet gripper um, spot and then for the next part there wasn't another ring so basically I just cut this to fit and then kind of poked a hole in for the sheet gripper to attach to. You guys can get creative with this, but this doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is an outdoor cushion and it's basically a cover to kind of keep my cushions out of the weather. And also I wanted it to kind of match my outdoor patriotic decor a little bit better than the roses that were on there. So I think it came out super cute for temporary. I did should have also bought another one. Now for the next DIY, I want to share with y'all an amazing hack that you all can do on these Dollar Tree bamboo tiki torches. You can actually pop the little torch part out. You just cut the little strings that's holding it on, pull that out and you can turn it into a solar torch. I thought this might be a great idea for those of you that have small kiddos or want to put this closely up against um, like a patio post, which is what I'm going to do. And you can even tie them on if you need a little bit more security on them, if it's maybe windy where you're at by using some of this Dollar Tree wired jute twine. So the sky is the limit for these. You guys can paint these. You can leave them natural. So many ideas and this just might be a great idea if you guys need something a little bit safer than a tiki torch but really want to have a soft little glow. Again remember that that solar top part right there needs to catch some light for the light to be the maximum effectiveness but I just thought this was such a fun little hack. I thought of this myself. I've really never seen this. Um, comment if you guys have seen this before, but check this out. Now, I'm going to pull mine out and I decided to really jazz things up. You guys know I love to get super extra and paint mine. So I'm going to paint mine in a rose gold color. I thought that that would make it look kind of like it's a copper stake instead of the bamboo. I do love the bamboo if you're going for that natural look, but just to jazz it up a little bit, I thought that would be a fun idea. So I'm using this Rust-Oleum metallic finish spray paint and we have this construction zone area at my home in my backyard. So the rocks are gonna be covered by the end of next week with a bunch of dirt, but I'm just going to go ahead and give it a nice, good, healthy coat of the copper colored rose gold spray paint to make them look like they're like a copper kind of rose gold metallic stake. Now check this out. Here is how they turned out after about two light coats. Definitely let it dry also in between coats, but I just thought that that was such a fun and genius little hack. Again, if you just needed something a little bit more safe than the Tiki Torch or wanted to you know, kind of put them closer up against a post. Here's how they look inside of my house. So if you guys had a little space that you wanted to put by a window and just make it look kind of jazzy and fresh, you always could pop them in. Just remember that those solar parts, the top part has to get some light to make it really pretty and have that beautiful solar effect. You could even, if you were doing this inside, wrap some pretty little fairy lights around it. Really the sky is the limit. Have fun with it, get creative, and go for it. 
this solar DIY idea, this is kind of a really cool hack. You can take pretty much any vase from Dollar Tree that has a smaller little top to it, fill it up with some pretty stones, or leave as is. I found these beautiful aqua marbles at Dollar Tree. Surprise, surprise, I actually thought it was the stones, but it was marbles, which I thought was really, really neat. And take one of those solar stakes and take the little stake part off, and then you can pop it down in to any little jar, big, small. Um, the sky is the limit. Dollar Tree has so many different jar options. You could even grab some of the colored ones. Now here's how it looks with the glow at night. Again, you guys can pop this in to a little space by your kitchen window if it gets a lot of sun or outdoor on a patio or a deck. Here's another idea for you is to take some of these Dollar Tree darker colored stones and pop that in. That's going to give it a little bit different look. I wanted to share with you all some different ways on how to style these. I love these rocks. They look really high end. And then to get your solar um, stake to kind of fit down in there, you can just kind of wiggle it around and kind of move those rocks around. So here is how this one is looking, popped into a little tray with some succulents around it. And I'm gonna share with you guys how to make that tray. Here's another idea with how to style this is to take some little Dollar Tree candlesticks and pop them on top of a candlestick. You could even add one of the Dollar Tree mirrors underneath of that to really make it jazzy. Now you might wanna paint the candlestick in the mirror the same color, but these are just some different ideas on what you could do. You could also take one of the Dollar Tree trays, add some stones to that, and then add some of the little solar vases to that. You would probably want to match the vases, but again, just sharing with you guys some ideas. This was probably my favorite one where I took some of the Dollar Tree succulents. These were the ones that came just lightly potted. I pulled them out of the pot and then I just removed the extra part at the bottom that I didn't need with some little wire cutters. You could use scissors. And here is how that looks. Now, I feel like this looks like something you would see at Pottery Barn or Kirkland's or the home decor stores, much more expensive than just a couple of bucks. I did paint that tray a rose gold with my metallic spray paint. I get it at Walmart. It's a couple of dollars and it really makes things look very, very high end. So comment and let me know what you guys think about this and if you're going to be attempting this. I feel like this one is great for all ages because it's no hot glue required um, and just so fun to play with the different stone ideas and there's just so many different. For this DIY we're going to make a cookie pan butterfly so I'm going to take my little butterfly felt um, goodies and cut it out to where it's the size of the cookie pan and then I'm going to spray paint it. And you guys can spray paint it any color. I chose this rose gold and here is how that looks. The next step to this, oh and say hi to Tinky my cat. <laughs> the next Next step is to just cut it out from the little cookie pan and use a pair of scissors that are kind of like older scissors because the cookie pan may dull your really nice crafting scissors. So just a little side note on that. But I had this all cut out and then I decided to go a super extra step and take these hangers and create a large butterfly for my smaller cookie pan butterfly to fit down into. And I actually saw this part of the DIY um, on Barb the Shabby Trees channel. So hey Barb, I love you girl. Thank you for all your fabulous DIYs. Go say hi to Barb. Um, and so I'm just going to take and I'm going to zip tie the two edges of the hanger as you can see over here is where you wanna start. And then you can loosely put some zip ties in the center, but I did find that zip tying my ends made it hold together a little bit better and a little bit straighter. So that's just a little side tip on how I kind of worked this out. And now I'm zip tying the center as well. So these would be super fun to make with kiddos because of course there's no gluing required and you could pick really any color of hanger that you wanted to. You just need four hangers and you're gonna put them end to end where it looks like it um, creates like a little heart shape. Now I decided to use my rose gold spray paint. I'm kind of on a rose gold kick here um, and spray paint this to just give it a little bit more of a high-end look and here is how it turned out now I did take um, one of the Dollar Tree solar stakes and add that to the center of it so this is kind of a fun little idea for you is you can make a little garden um, 
butterfly by zip tying a solar stake to the center of it. And then if you want to cover up your zip tie, you can add some nautical rope around it or I'm gonna add my little butterfly to it. Now I will tell you that my little butterfly had a little bit of trouble holding on with the hot glue. I had to re-hot glue it. And if you get live in a really hot area, you may want to use something different. You may want to poke a little hole and zip tie your little metal butterfly onto that. The next little part of this was I'm going to use one of the little Dollar Tree handles. This is in the broom section and I just cut it in half. I just bent it in half. Basically they bend in half and then that solar stake will fit directly down into that and you can use some E6000 glue or hot glue to get that to attach a little bit better. And of course you guys know me, I have to make it really extra so I'm using some nautical rope to kind of wrap around the base of that. And here is how it looks out on my patio. I'm so excited. I can't wait to share with you guys more of my patio. I've been really working on it today, getting it ready. My son Max's birthday is this weekend, so we're going to celebrate out here. It's not quite finished, but here is how it turned out. I think Sorry, it's super $88, adorable. and I just knew that we could duplicate it using Dollar Tree supplies. So for the first Dollar Tree DIY, I'm just taking this garden planter. This is a garden planter that I found at Dollar Tree, and I spray painted it white with some matte spray paint. And then I'm just taking this painter's tape and I'm going to begin using the painter's tape to add stripes down the planter. I'm also using a piece of tape to try to space my stripes evenly. And I will tell you that this project is a little bit tedious, but please give yourself some grace. It does not have to be perfect. Mackenzie Child's items are hand painted. So just have fun with it. Relax. So go ahead and continue to run that painter's tape down your garden planter until you get all the way around to the end. The next step is you're going to take your painter's tape and you're going to begin to run the painter's tape around the planter. Now because the planter is curved, it's not going to be perfect, but do just kind of try to adjust it as you go and have fun with it. Now I'm using some black craft paint. This is the Arteza brand craft paint and it is a pretty nice craft paint. They sell it online if you guys need some really nice acrylic paint. And I'm just gonna go ahead and begin to dot inside of the little squares. I'm also using a Dollar Tree sponge brush. You could use any kind of paintbrush, whatever floats your boat, but begin to go ahead and color in your squares. Again, take a deep breath and have fun with this. It does not have to be perfect hand painted with all of the goodies flaws and all make it just that more wonderful the other thing I want to tell you is to go ahead and give it a good heavy coating um, otherwise you may want to go in and do a second coat but this craft paint was pretty good so I ended up only having to use one coat and then once you're finished with that you can go ahead and begin to remove your tape now as you can see I had the tape pull away from my white spot in a couple of places but I do have some white touch-up paint which is a good idea for this project now I'm going to go ahead and use a paintbrush and I'm going to start to color in the squares in between the lines so you're just going to paint squares in between your little lines. Now this is a little bit less than perfect also because the planter that I chose has a basket weave so it's actually a bumpy surface. Note to self, try to choose a surface that's a little bit more smooth unless you're okay with it, which I'm okay with some imperfections. Um, but if you're OCD, which I'm a little OCD sometimes, you may again need to take a deep breath and just have fun with it, but continue to work all the way around. And remember, you can use some white paint to touch up any spots that you may get um, imperfections in. So now I'm just going in with some of that white paint and touching it up. Now I have this beautiful gold paint and I'm going to rim the bottom of my project with some gold paint. So if you look at the Mackenzie Child's um, items, they usually have gold paint a little bit at the top or the bottom. And that just finishes it up and gives it a little bit more of a regal um, look. And then I'm also kind of running the gold paint down the front of the planter, again, to give it that beautiful Mackenzie Child's-esque feel. Thank you. 
So I popped my pretty fern into my beautiful planter, totally on a budget, and this fern. For this solar DIY idea, this is kind of a really cool hack. You can take pretty much any vase from Dollar Tree that has a smaller little top to it, fill it up with some pretty stones, or leave as is. I found these beautiful aqua marbles at Dollar Tree. Surprise, surprise, I actually thought it was the stones, but it was marbles, which I thought was really, really neat. And take one of those solar stakes and take the little stake part off and then you can pop it down in to any little jar big small um, the sky is the limit Dollar Tree has so many different jar options you could even grab some of the colored ones now here's how it looks with the glow at night again you guys can pop this in to a little space by your kitchen window if it gets a lot of Sun or outdoor on a patio or a deck Here's another idea for you is to take some of these Dollar Tree darker colored stones and pop that in. That's going to give it a little bit different look. I wanted to share with you all some different ways on how to style these. I love these rocks. They look really high end. And then to get your solar um, stake to kind of fit down in there, you can just kind of wiggle it around and kind of move those rocks around. So here is how this one is looking, popped into a little tray with some succulents around it. And I'm going to share with you guys how to make that tray. Here's another idea with how to style this is to take some little Dollar Tree candlesticks and pop them on top of a candlestick. You could even add one of the Dollar Tree mirrors underneath of that to really make it jazzy. Now you might want to paint the candlestick in the mirror the same color but these are just some different ideas on what you could do you could also take one of the Dollar Tree trays add some stones to that and then add some of the little solar vases to that you would probably want to match the vases but again just sharing with you guys some ideas this was probably my favorite one where I took some of the Dollar Tree succulents. These were the ones that came just lightly potted. I pulled them out of the pot and then I just removed the extra part at the bottom that I didn't need with some little wire cutters. You could use scissors. And here is how that looks. Now, I feel like this looks like something you would see at Pottery Barn or Kirkland's or the home decor stores, much more expensive than just a couple of bucks. I did paint that tray a rose gold with my metallic spray paint. I get it at Walmart. It's a couple of dollars and it really makes things look very, very high end. So comment and let me know what you guys think about this and if you're going to be attempting this. I feel like this one is great for all ages because it's no hot glue required um, and just so fun to play with the different stone ideas and there's just so many. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, I'm sharing with you all how to make a super adorable little little side table using two of the Dollar Tree wire baskets and so I just zip tied the wire baskets in to end and I only needed two zip ties for this project and then I have um, a little burner cover and I'm going to use that for the top part of my basket so once those two were together I also decided to jazz it up just a little bit with some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope now you guys could use a ribbon you could use any color of rope that you love um, or you could just forego this part but I thought it would be fun to add that and just kind of make it look like a little bit summery and this could also go for a coastal theme so any of the DIYs that you all see me do always remember you can change it up to suit your home decor the next thing I wanted to do was add my top to my table so I used e6000 glue and some hot glue and then I'm gonna pop the burner cover on and that was really cute but I decided to customize it to match my summer decor and so using a bunch of Waverly White chalk paint or any chalk paint is really great because it has great coverage um, I just added that to the top of the burner cover let it dry and I think I only needed one coat then now I'm taking this napkin from Hobby Lobby it's one of those lemon napkins you guys can also find lemon napkins at Dollar General for a buck and I just cut out the shape of the burner cover and then I did detach um, the second part of the napkin so there's like a little white liner on the back of the napkin I took that apart and then adding Mod Podge and I'm using waterproof Mod Podge which you guys can get at Walmart or 
your local craft store. I wanted it to be waterproof so I could set my drink on it. Um, but I am just adding the napkin back on and kind of straightening it out here and then adding one more layer of Mod Podge to the top of that. And again, waterproof Mod Podge is great if you're making a tabletop because it will seal it and it makes it waterproof. So if you have a cold drink, it won't, you know, mess up your pretty design. And again, think about this. You guys could pop into Hobby Lobby and buy pretty much any kind of design paper that you wanted and customize that paper to match your little summer decor or really any decor. This wouldn't necessarily even have to be for summer. Okay, so now I'm just adding some nautical rope again to the side of this to match the other nautical rope and also just to kind of jazz it up and give it a little bit of style here. And also think about this, if you guys wanted to do a glam table, you could always use bling wrap um, in place of the rope and then do like a really pretty little glam top. Ooh, you could even do glitter as the top. So here is how it looks popped in to to my little summertime spring setup here. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to decorate for this new season. I still do have to pack up my Easter decor, but check this out, you guys. I thought it was a really cute little table idea for only a couple of bucks. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I have to share with you all how to make a super amazing Dollar Tree topiary. So grab one of their flower garden tins and then pop some foam down inside of that. And then using a skewer or a shish kebab stick or a little dowel, pop that into the center and that's where your shish kebab's going to go. The next thing I'm gonna do is just trim off some of the ends of this little faux greenery that they're selling at Dollar Tree. It is helpful too to push the greenery towards the top, but not so far that it pops off of its stem. And then you can just use a little foam ball. Dollar Tree has these little foam balls and you can pop that greenery in. I did end up using six bundles for this entire project. And I will suggest if you guys want to use less bundles, you can paint your foam ball. Don't use spray paint, just use acrylic paint, paint it green, and you will probably get be able to get away with using less. But I wanted to make it nice and and make this really beautiful kind of English garden style topiary and so I just thought that this would be so pretty and fabulous and honestly you guys I have been wanting a topiary forever I've been kind of shopping around can't, couldn't really find any and couldn't really figure out how to make one on a budget until I found this pretty little faux greenery from Dollar Tree and the minute I saw it I knew now you guys could take a shortcut and pop into Hobby Lobby and grab a little um, garden ball there that would work too if you don't want to go through this kind of process and then just use the planter and the little dowel to pop in to your flower and garden planter. Now I am giving my flower and garden planter a bit of weight here by popping some stones in. Super easy, you guys can totally do this. And then I'm finishing it off with a nice little topper of Spanish moss. You could also use some of the little Dollar Tree faux greenery in and around the base of your planter. So I hope this gives you guys an idea for how to create a fabulous little garden planter on a total budget you guys and it always feels really good to me to create something homemade and handmade I feel like there's just love that goes into the project not that I'm against buying things store-bought because I totally love to shop too but now I decided to pop in and take a little bit of antique wax or paint and just paint my little um, shish kebab stick and so here is how it turns out I am so excited with this I'm probably going to make one or two more because I'd like to kind of set them up close to a window as if they were real topiaries, but I really love this too because I can't kill this. <laughs> so no maintenance here, no fuss, no muss, and we did it on a total budget. this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with y'all how to create a super 
easy little small mini tipsy pot. So you guys loved my first tipsy pot that I did. I did a really large one, but now I'm gonna take three of these little Dollar Tree garden planters and they come in a three pack, so there's only a dollar there. And then I'm gonna use a wooden dowel and I did drill a hole in two of my planters and that's all I needed. I actually drilled it in three, but I only needed it in two anyway. And then you're just gonna take and put something heavy in the bottom. I chose some of these stones and then you can just run your little um, planters on top of them. And then I did add a little bit of foam to the tops of these because I don't want my florals popping out, but you guys could really get creative. You could make a succulent tipsy planter. I'm making this kind of like little herb lavender tipsy planter. I think this would be cute in my kitchen window or maybe even on a little side table. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to decorate for this new season. But anyway, this actually is lavender from Walmart. You guys can find this also at Dollar Tree, but I'm kind of low on my Dollar Tree lavender, so I thought I would use this. And it holds up really nicely. It doesn't shed as bad as the Dollar Tree lavender it does and so then the next thing I wanted to add was some of my little greenery so this is just reindeer moss from Dollar Tree it's actually just moss I believe that reindeer moss has a little bit of a different texture to it but anyway pop in some moss have fun with it add some more greenery get creative and go for it you guys adorable garden table using four Dollar Tree garden planters and a Dollar Tree pizza pan. I'm starting out with this E6000 glue and I just flipped my garden planter over and on the bottom part of the garden planter I'm going to dot and rim around the garden planter with the E6000 glue. You want to leave a space around where the E6000 glue is on the edge to also add in some hot glue. The E6000 glue is a permanent hold and then the hot glue is a temporary hold to kind of help the glue hold on there and I'm also going to add some nautical rope around the edge of the planter so it doesn't really quite matter if um, there's a little bit of glue around the edges and then I'm just going to pop that second garden planter around um, on top of that now the next step is to repeat this process around the edge of the next part of the garden planter so I'm adding e6000 glue and then hot glue so you're going to repeat the gluing process as you stack your planters until you get to the very top and you're going to add the E6000 glue and the hot glue and then you can pop your pizza pan onto the top and you can use your finger or a towel or a tissue to wipe off any excess glue and you are going to add some nautical rope around the edges of your gluey spaces and that's going to kind of hide any of your gluey work. The next step for me was to take a can of spray paint and I just use like a metallic silver spray paint and I do suggest you use Rust-Oleum 2x spray paint now I'm just using what I have on hand um, but that for me is the best spray paint out there um, it does not chip as much and it just has a really great hold but I used the spray paint that I had on hand which is metallic silver and coated this entire thing even the pizza pan because I wanted to 
all be one color um, with this silver color. Now I'm gonna use this actually as an indoor garden planter in my little crafting studio. I recently redid it and the walls are like a white and gray. And so I thought the gray would be perfect as an accent color for a little side table. Now I'm taking some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope and I'm just going around the little seams of my table. And this is gonna also give it a little bit of extra protection kind of a foundation. So now I'm just using hot glue and I'm adding a rim of hot glue where the seam is and then just at hot glue my little nautical rope on here now I was actually hoping that in my craft stash I had the white colored nautical rope but I had the brown colored nautical rope and I actually ended up being happier with that in the end so use what you have on hand get creative and go for it and so you guys this table cost me about six dollars plus the cost of some spray paint and I was super excited with how it ended up turning out how fun and fabulous on a budget. And here is how it's looking after I had it all completed and had everything set up. I did end up popping this little charger. I got it at Hobby Lobby and I do believe they have these striped chargers available. Um, and this is just a little striped pillow that I had left over from last season. I thought it felt kind of festive and crisp. As I begin to look forward to a new season of decorating, I liked to use kind of some Paris inspired black and white stripes. I thought that looked perfect on top of the little silver table, kind of accenting my new studio. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna share with you all how to take some of these garden planters and give them a little bit more of a fresh look. You can also take really any garden planters you all have on hand and jazz them up with some spray paint. So I started out with just a basic white coat of spray paint and that is going to make everything cohesive. I only had one can of this beige spray paint and I didn't want to run out so I started out with white and that's kind of an easy way to go if that's what you have on hand I'm just trying to use what I have on hand so I gave them all a really good dusting of white spray paint let that dry for a couple hours and then gave it another good dusting of beige spray paint over that and I've been noticing on the Pottery Barn website that they're using like a lot of kind of light whites and beiges and then also black so that must be the trend where it's just kind of that more neutral you know kind of modern look but it made all of these look really fresh and also cohesive so you know I had just kind of some random planters and then this one was cute with kind of the chippy pink but again I'm trying to go for more of a cohesive look and just make everything look nice and fresh. The other thing I suggest is after you get done spray painting everything to seal it off with like an acrylic sealer or you can use a waterproof Mod Podge. So that's just another thing you guys can do to keep them a little bit more weather resistant. Now I recently popped in to my local Walmart and found some tulips. So I'm gonna use some of this Dollar Tree potting soil. I've never used it before. Poke your holes in the bottom. There's gonna be a little spot in the bottom of your Dollar Tree planters to poke a hole. Then you can add some rocks to that and then some Dollar Tree potting soil. And these little tulips were only five bucks at my Walmart. 
And so I'm just gonna pop them into here. Now I'm not sure that I'll leave them in here. I don't have a lot of plant options except for tulips and pansies out at my stores right now. So I thought these would just be pretty to put out on my back um, patio. I may end up replanting them so they can take root and just kind of come back year after year. I need to look into tulips. This is my first go around with tulips. So comment down below if you guys have any um, advice for me on tulips. Also, don't forget to enter my Instagram giveaway that I'm hosting with several other ladies. So if you guys pop over to my Olivia's Romantic Home Instagram, we're giving away a $200 Amazon gift card. So you guys definitely want to check that out and just follow all the rules that I have posted in that. And then here are some pretty yellow pansies. Oh my goodness, I was so happy to get my hands dirty and really get down in there and plant some goodies. And so here is how that turned out. Oh, and with the pansies, I actually just left those <laughs> inside of their little uh, planter because I do still need to be able to move things in and out of the house if we have like a deep freeze that happens. We've had it snow in April here. So that is one thing that I... Uh, so for the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create a faux outdoor garden topiary planter. I'm just taking this planter. It actually has real dirt in it, and I'm digging a hole and putting a plastic container in it to set my topiary on. Now, this topiary is a DIY that we created a couple videos back, and I'll update you really quick in case you missed that video. Here's the DIY. I'm taking two terracotta pots. One is from the Dollar Tree that I painted white, and another one, guys, I've had this pot left over for years so anyway I just painted them white and then I distressed them with some sandpaper and now I'm adding in some Dollar Tree styrofoam I want to create kind of a little um stacked pot here so just add that styrofoam in and then I'm going to add some of that Dollar Tree grass I wanted it to look kind of like a faux herb pot I really feel like um in the summertime there's a lot of greenery so I wanted to bring that greenery element into my home for summertime and also I wanted to add in some of this Dollar Tree moss and then just continue to add in more greenery I also added in this large piece of greenery, greenery through the top to stabilize that little top pot. I did hot glue the top pot to the piece of styrofoam, but I wanted to stabilize it by poking a big long piece of greenery through it. Now you can see I'm adding in some of those Dollar Tree ferns, and this just came out so gorgeous and so perfect. So once you have your topiary planted on top of your dirt and your little plastic container, you're just going to take the dirt and you're going to push it down and then you can add some real greenery or some faux greenery. This is faux greenery actually that I had left over from Easter and so I'm just going to pop this in here for right now. Again, I do plan on planting real flowers once I have a chance to go flower shopping, which I cannot wait to do. We are finally past the season of freeze so I definitely know it's time to get out my really pretty florals but I wanted to create something really beautiful and if you guys have ever seen some of those variegated topiary planters at Lowe's or Home Depot they're really expensive and so I was trying to make one kind of like one of those that has different varieties of flowers in it these are all from the Dollar Tree or from the thrift store so I think it came out really good and I'm just kind of randomly putting them in they they do kind of have a flow to them because they're all white florals and again I cannot wait to put some really beautiful colorful florals in here but for right now I'm kind of feeling this fresh French chic farmhouse vibe so I'm gonna go with it And here it is, the finished product. I actually think it came out really, really good. It looks fairly real to me if you don't get up super close to notice that the florals are faux, but it's also kind of nice that I don't have the pressure of trying. So thank you all so much for joining me in another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It's a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I am Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home. I love to share with you all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget, and I truly believe you do 
do not have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. And also for everybody that comes back and loves on me, and thank you all so, so much. Your kind comments and just this wonderful community is so um, just heartfelt. And I'm so thankful and blessed to have y'all here. I have been crafting since I was a little girl and um, I just pointed the camera and just started filming myself and the rest is history. So thank you guys so much for your love and support. I have an Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook page. You guys can pop over there. I do share several DIYs a day over there as well as on my Instagram, my TikTok and all of those kind of fun things. Um, I also want to just be an encourager to you all. Um, I am a woman that is beginning to enter the season of my life where I'm going to be more of an empty nester and hopefully a grandmother one day. Um, so I guess just there's so many seasons and phases of life and I know even the Bible talks about for every um, time there is a season under heaven. I know there's a scripture so drop it down below um, so you guys can really um, just help me out with that one. Um, but just thinking about as we transition with grace to each season, sometimes it can be difficult. Um, you know, I, felt, I always felt like I was like a really good little kid mommy. I'm an okay teen mommy, but I felt like I did really good when the kids were a little bit younger. Um, I do my best, you know, um, and now I have college kids. And so I feel like now they're just, we're just all kind of more friends. You know, they don't need a whole lot of parenting, but I'm always their mom. Like I'm always home for them. And, um, you know, still they can come into my home and open the refrigerator and clean out the refrigerator. I'm hoping to grow with the kids this weekend. Um, but I guess just what I'm trying to say is like, we are all going through transitions of life. I remember when I was a young mommy, I was so busy all the time, just constantly going, 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 going to keep the kids busy, you know, um, or not, not even just busy, but they just had so much energy. So I remember that phase of life and I have friends, ladies that I work out with, you know, go to church with, and they're in that season of life and I can just feel that. And I always try to compliment them on just even showing up to church and having their hair and makeup done or their kiddos together or whatever. You know, I remember you kind of feel frazzled, I guess, when your children are younger. And then, you know, in your early 20s even, I always felt a little bit lost at times. You know, there was just so many new things to learn. Um, so no matter where you're at in your life and transition of season, give yourself grace, keep moving forward, try not to get stuck in the past. I think that's what can hurt us the most and that's what can smother our gifts that God has given us. So um, I just wanna hug all of your hearts so tight and encourage you guys, wherever you're at in whatever season you're in, give yourself grace, keep going. It, nothing is gonna be perfect, um, so. I hope that gives you a little bit of tidbit and a little nugget. So I wish you a gorgeous, fabulous, blessed weekend. Until our next video, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. Talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.